Hey there, today I wanna talk to you about Starlink, or at the least my experience with Starlink. There it is, you see it right there? So I ordered this dish on day one. As soon as you were able to place a pre-order, I went and put a pre-order, right? But I wanna say because I live in California's Inland Empire, right? It's kind of like a suburb, but it's, it's you know, city. Um, they didn't send it to me right away. They sent it to a bunch of people before that. People that were in rural areas that there was no internet connection there because that's where it seems to work best, right? So I got it, I don't know, maybe a year ago. And then I just kept it in the box, didn't actually use it, set it up, played with it a little bit. And then about a couple months ago, I decided to test it. What happens here is that my internet comes through a coax cable. Uh, this cable probably right here. This is, this is my internet comes through a coaxial cable. And what happens is that it's fast, but it's very intermittent. So as I'm watching TV, for example, then everything will freeze. And then, you know, I'll play with it and mess with it and stuff. And then, as you know, by the time that I actually want to get up and then try to go and see the thing, like it comes back. It's, it's just just enough to screw you know with your whatever you're doing online and then by the time you want to get on the phone call someone or something then it's back right and so it's kind of annoying and it has happening all the time and it's always happening and so i thought well let's get uh let's set up this uh starling because i have it there and i haven't been using it and let's see uh how well it works so i set it up and then i connected several things like my phone my computer would enter like uh, will uh, connect to it, my TV. And what happens is that in those last two months, what ends up happening is that I get to notice when this thing now uh, is intermittent, right? Because <clears throat> my TV stops working and then I go and look, oh, which network is it connected? Oh, yeah, it's the Starlink network. And then I switch it over to my other one and then I continue watching whatever I'm doing. The same thing with my computer. If it's slow, if I'm uploading a video, or whatever, then you know it's like slow. Then I look and it's like, oh, which 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 network is it connected? Oh, it's connected to the Starlink. And then, so I know this is just as uh, intermittent as the coax cable that is coming to my house. Why? Because for the past two months, I've been using it primarily as my main thing, and then I have to constantly keep switching it back to the regular. Uh, internet that I have, right? So, of course, this is because this is a uh, city. I live in a city that has a lot of people. I don't know. There, there might be too many customers here that have it, and we're all connected to that same little satellites that are going by, right? Uh, and so, that's the reason why this works really good in rural areas where the, there's no other internet. But in city areas or in, you know... Uh, yeah, with people that are more populated, then this this is that isn't good as good because a lot of people are connected to it, and so therefore the uh, bandwidth is uh, a bit slow, right? I guess every station that connects to that same radio up in the satellite, right, uh, will slow it down because now you have to share that connection, and so <clears throat> that's what it is. I give you an example. So my regular connection uh coax connection it's, it's sometimes it's like 30 to 50 megabits per second download speeds this one is usually like you know 15 maybe 15 20 megabit download speeds and then the upload speeds is i've never seen it above 10 uh and it's the same thing with the with my wired connection my coax connection it's about 15 but i think it's it's way quicker it's more stable the uplink the upload speeds right and so that's why um <clears throat> i'm gonna take it down now this that's it uh maybe what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna get the rv service which is the service that you can turn on and off uh as you need it if you're gonna need it this month because you're gonna travel somewhere then you can just take this with you set it up and then just pay for that month um, but yeah, I think I'm going to disconnect a monthly thing. It's about $135 because I got the extra roaming thing. Um, and so it's a bit expensive. It's more than what I'm paying at home to have it. And so, yeah, I, I think the only 
thing that is very, very cool about Starlink is that, one, you can take it remotely anywhere, right? And so you can bring it with you. And it will work even in super remote areas. If you end up somewhere in the middle of the desert or somewhere in Baja California, or you take it to Hawaii, for example, in the on the in the dry side of like Maui, where there's no internet, there's no you know electricity or whatever, you could you could connect this and you could be up and running, right? You can go over there and stay over there, and you can do work. You can connect to the internet. You can I can upload videos and download and you know all this other stuff, which is very very cool. So. There you go. This is just my experience with Starlink here in California and the Inland Empire. Not the greatest. It's great to be able to take it with you. But yeah, if you're looking at it as a primary thing, yeah, I'd say the, you might be wasting your time. I tried it and it didn't work as my primary thing. It's not faster than what I have or it's not even better, you know, less intermittent than it. So there we go.